the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout. We will sing and shout. We will sing and shout the Let not your hearts be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, or how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the truth, the life, and the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We have been convened by the providential hand of God to say farewell to our departed sister Portia Burgess Etheridge. We're here not because she died, but because she lived, and she made an indelible impact on this family, this community, and the lives of children in the District of Columbia. And so we are here not to glamorize death, but to acknowledge that in the death of Jesus Christ, eternal life has become tangible and real, and that the sting of death has been overcome, and the grave has been nullified. And so we come with that assurance and that hope today as the people of God, let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, we invoke your presence now for comfort, for assurance, for reassurance, that your presence would draw near us and touch our lives in the midst of the reality of death, that there is an awakening upon, among us that we too must go this way as all of humanity. But there is something greater on the other side that awaits us. So, Lord, sensitize us to that in this moment as we grapple with our own mortality and finitude. Help us to understand ultimacy in the midst of penultimacy. And help us to understand the greater depths and heights of heaven as we deal with the gutturals here on earth. Now, Lord God, Allow your spirit to permeate this place and our worship as we say farewell to your beloved daughter, Portia. It's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I ask you now to join in the singing of that grand hymn of the church which comforts us in a moment such as this, which tells us of not just an assurance, but a blessed assurance. And there's a difference between insurance and assurance. Insurance is underwritten by a policy. Assurance is predicated upon the promises of God. So we rest on those promises as we lift our collective voice. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine. Then we'll have Francis Montez to come read the Old Testament and Dr. Victory Thomas, the New Testament, from the lectern to my left. Blessed show. 
Good morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the darkness valley. I fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Good morning. I'll be doing a reading from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. For we know that if the earth tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be further clothed with our heavenly dwelling. For surely when we have been clothed in it, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan under all burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by, my li by life. The one who has prepared us for this very good thing is God, who has given us the spirit as a down payment. So we are always confident, even though we know 
that while we are at home in the body, we are always away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. For all of us must appear before the, before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each receive due recompense for actions done in the body, whether good or evil. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace with confidence, knowing that God indeed hears the prayers of the children. Let us pray. Dear God, we confide in you now as our confidant the one to whom we can pour out our spirit and know that there is no judgment or condemnation. We can come with our questions. We can come with our disturbances. We can come even with the things that anger us. We can even come in the bewilderment known as death. So we approach you, dear God, because we really have nowhere else to turn in this moment. So our prayer is that you hear us as we grapple with Portia's exit from this earthly clan. God, our hearts are saddened. Some may be baffled. Others may be angry. Some even, dear God, may have regrets for words that were left unsaid, debts unpaid, remarks that they wish they could retract. Yet, God, we can come, and we do come, asking for your comfort. Touch us now in this moment in which we've been broken, and allow your healing touch to put back the broken pieces. Speak to us with soothing words that heal rather than destroy. Allow your presence, oh God, to nudge us and remind us that in the midst of our humanity, there is a bit of eternity right there alongside of us and even within us. For you promised that you would never abandon us or leave us, but that you would walk with us throughout the entirety of this journey. So now, God, as we say farewell to Portia Burgess Etheridge, we need all of that and then some. We also come knowing that you are an all-sufficient God and that there is no lack in you. And so whatever it is that we stand in need of in this moment, you are able and willing to supply and supply in abundance to overflowing. So grant us, now as we say farewell to Portia, a peace that passes all understanding. Allow us to experience in the turbulence of life your words that still calm raging seas and tells us that peace is a possibility and that the tumults will be still. And that 
there is nothing that can soothe the broken heart as your precious promises, which are always yea and amen. So now, Lord God, bless this the Burgess, the Green, the Etheridge families, and all who are assembled in this conclave today to worship and say farewell to Portia. We ask for your comforting presence to cascade every aspect of this experience, our thinking, our reading, our preaching, our saying, and even our crying. Bathe it now in grace and abundant grace. And allow us to know your love that is without measure. Now, Lord God, our prayer for comfort this day for this family is just that. Be God in ways that we know that we expect. But God, we are facing something that is so unusual to us and yet is so common. And so we ask you to be God to us in ways that we don't even imagine nor that we can even think in this moment. And allow us to rest in you as we have experienced the disturbance called death. Now, God, we thank you for Jesus who robbed the grave of its victory and took the sting out of death so that we can say even now, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in that unparalleled and matchless name that we pray of this family and for this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ms. Layla Bunch will now come and remind us of the assuring presence of God who watches over sparrows and also watches over Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Layla Bunch, and I used to spend all my time in Ms. Etheridge's classroom um, with my sister at my mom's school. And she will be dearly missed, but this song is for her. I will be singing His Eyes on the Sparrow. <clears throat> Why should I fear? Discouraged, and why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel? Why should I 
I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I am free. His eyes. Good morning. Reading this in loving memory of my dear friend, Portia Etheridge. Portia and I first met when we both attended a meeting and were certified and hired to teach for DC public schools. I had the privilege to work with Portia for almost 25 years at William Syfax Elementary in Southwest DC. Our friendship as coworkers soon became good friends. Portia was the kindergarten teacher and I taught first grade. Our classrooms were right across the hall from each other. We often compared our roles as teachers to preparing one group of children to another phase of learning. She knew how to prepare the kindergartners for first grade. Not only did we teach them the subjects we learned, we taught them love, manners, and respect for all. I will never forget one of my birthdays, Portia and her class celebrated my birthday with me in my classroom. She decorated part of the classroom. 
There was a banner that she made that read, Happy Birthday, Mrs. Robinson. Then we had cake, ice cream, and juice. The children sang Happy Birthday to me, and I wouldn't tell them my age. Our friendship grew and became telephone calls, movie theater time on the weekends with lunch to follow, to every Saturday brunch at my house with a third good friend, Angela Tillman, who came to our school in 1985 as a pre-K teacher. The three of us experienced many good times and our sister's relationship grew over the years. The Arlene Drive block adopted the two of them as members of the Robinson family to come to our special events, especially the annual block picnic. When the COVID pandemic came, it limited our gatherings, sometimes a few calls until a time when we didn't call each other at all. Tillman became our go-between, delivering messages from me to her and from Portia back to me. Portia had a very private attitude, and no, no matter who you were and what advice she gave to you, unaccepted or not, that was Portia to say what was on her mind, with or without a smile, but we understood and loved each other anyhow. I look at Portia as a gift from God. Even though I didn't know soon of her health issue, I believe her labor was not in vain. Jesus said in Matthew 11:28, come to me all who labor and are heavy burdened and I will give you rest. Today your life on earth is past. In heaven, it starts anew. For God looked down and smiled and said, I planned it all for you. Rest in peace, Portia, your dear friend, Alma T. Robinson. Thank you. Good morning. I'm representing the Washington Teachers Union, and I'm reading this plaque for uh, Jackie Pork Lions. Whereas God has brought to a close, brought to a close the life of Portia Burgess Etheridge, the staff and members of the Washington Teachers Union with headquarters in the District of Columbia feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family during this time of bereavement. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Where's Portia Etheridge? Was a well-loved and be honorable woman, a teacher, an educator of 40 years and nine months, a friend, a long-standing Washington Teachers Union member and advocator, and most of all, lover of children whose time of, on this earth was cut too short. Her presence and spirit certainly left an everlasting memory in our hearts. Be it resolved, we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and reminds the family to be encouraged by remembering this point. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrow to you through the years, but start out bravely with a gallant smile and for my sake and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and in cheer, and I in turn will comfort you and hold you near. And never, never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you in the sky. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. And this is humbly submitted by the Washington Teachers Union on this day, the 5th of April, 2024. May I also add that she added of not only the 40 years and nine months, but from 2016 to 2023, she volunteered as a math interventionist at Patterson Elementary School. So, God bless you. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Bernetta Simmons, and I first met Portia Etheridge through our former principal, Angela Tillman. She introduced us. I have written a poem that's dedicated to her. It's called Portia Etheridge, the teacher who cared, shared, and loved. I met a woman who was a teacher named Portia Etheridge decades and decades ago. God must have whispered into my ear and said, this is someone you should know. I felt a bit intimidated and at a loss for words. You see, her reputation of being a first class top teacher turned out to be an understatement of what I actually learned and heard. Those who knew her came to know in time that the initial bark and gruffness was simply her DNA made of a special word spelling K-I-N-D, kind. Miss Etheridge was short in statue, but a true giant full of action. She did not teach from a chair or a desk. Teaching was her passion. She was indeed educationally gifted. Her students were uplifted and inspired to succeed and believe. Miss Etheridge was like an app that you find on your smartphone. Before there was Google, there was Etheridge. And believe me, she was bad to the bone. <laughs> she was a genius when it came to teaching, and she did it from her heart. On day one, her students were introduced to pencils and paper from the very start. And at the end of the school year, those same students could read and write because of their teacher who was extremely sharp. She taught them phonics from charts that she had created herself. She introduced them to careers involving the real world and action. Her little kindergartners became mathematicians who could count money and explain measurements, place values, decimals, and fractions. Ms. Etheridge's concepts and unique charts should have been patented, and they were, and placed in teacher stores on shelves. She mentored new teachers and demonstrated her own techniques and concepts she'd invented herself. Each time a visiting teacher spent time in Ms. Etheridge's room, they were impressed. Like the commercial on TV featuring Pepsi sings, Simply the best. Portia Etheridge, dear colleagues, family, and friends, Portia Etheridge was better than the rest. Would all of her students and colleagues from Merritt, Syfax, Minor, and Patterson stand? When you see that new twinkling, twinkling star, star shining ever, ever so brightly above, it is probably Etheridge lining them up, ready to teach them about caring, sharing, and love. Good morning. How's everybody doing? My name is Samuel Burgess, Jr. Um, <clears throat> Portia was my aunt. Um, not going to be long, but now, I really didn't know my aunt when I was young. As I got older and moved and lived with her, um, I learned a lot. Um, as much as you all Many of you all already said that you know how she was. Ms. Tillman said, at a bite, a bark with her. Once you got past that, then you got, got to the gist of it. And um, one particular time, um, my father just passed, and I was going through a hard time. Uh, just, just 
wasn't all the way there. And my aunt came to me, pulled me to the side, and told me what I needed to hear. And I had to take a step back because it did hurt my feelings, but it was the truth. And I needed that truth. And I don't think I would be here right now if she hadn't pulled me to the side and told me that. And she was a teacher. She led with honesty. I mean, some people lead with honesty to hurt you, but not my aunt. She just told you how it was. And you either took it or you left it. And I'm forever in her debt for that. How you doing? My name is Yolanda Burgess. Um, um, Portia was my aunt. Um, so first, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, she truly loved all of you guys. And then I want to thank um, her two foot soldiers, Ms. Tillman and Ms. Green. They was there from beginning to end. I mean, the women, I just want to tell y'all she loved y'all. And all the educators, thank you for all that you do. And Mount Olive Baptist Church, man, I was going through some stuff and I found the obituary. The obituary was from 1962. They've been burying our family and helping our family with Chin for years. And I want to thank y'all for that. And when my granddaddy would bring me to this church as a little child and I sung in the choir, I didn't realize he was paving for greatness. He was here for over 60 something years. And that held the family together to today. And we're still standing in Mount Olive. So I just want to thank Mount Olive Baptist Church for being a pillar in our lives for years, years. My aunt, man, she was tough on me. Sometimes I ain't understand. She used to I say, what they do, what's going on? Just mind your business. I said, all right, okay. Man, but she made me the person I am today. Man, I come from a good stock. I come from some strong women and some strong men. Man, I'm telling you something, that was a powerful lady, boy. She is powerful, and I thank God that she was able to grace me with her presence and along with my Aunt Cindy, who is also a matriarch. I thank God for these women. They are some powerful women, and the testimonies from the educators and the things she done, she was a great, she was great. And we just want to let y'all know we love y'all. We love y'all for loving on us and loving on my aunt. And Thank you for everything. Amen. We thank family and friends and coworkers for their tributes, which have moved us internally and externally. We now will read a portion of the obituary that has been printed. It is rather lengthy. Those of you who are teachers, I hope you taught us how to speed read. <laughs> For those of you who read like tortoises, like myself, then you will have it as a benefit after the service. <laughs> Amen. But you got one chorus and one verse to read as much as you can. Amen. Let us read silently to soft music, the Obituary of Portia Burgess Etheridge.
Richard Ware will now come and help us take it to the king. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. This is a celebration, amen. Hallelujah. trying to pray but where are you I'm all churched out heard and abused I can't face what's left to do truth is I'm weak no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die. Mm. One touch will change my life. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering. Lay me at the throne, lead me there alone. To gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the King. Truth is, it's time to stop playing these games. We need a word, Lord, for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now. Let it pour like rain. We're desperate. We're chasing after you, you. No rules, no religion. I made my decision to run to you the healer that I need take me to the king don't have much to bring my heart is torn to pieces it's my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gain upon your glory and sing to you this song Lord we're in the way we keep making mistakes the glory is not for us it's all for you take to the king don't have much to bring my heart is torn to pieces it's my offering and lead me there 
I want to gaze upon your glory. Sing to you. Say, take me to the King. Take me to the King. Take me to the King. To the end. Isn't it good to know that you've got a place to go where ultimate authority reigns and rest when there are difficulties in life? We can go to the king because we are the king's children. To this family, I say to you, we thank you for entrusting this service of commemoration unto us as a community of faith, we thank you for your loved one and we bless you for your vote of confidence. We also are encouraging all of us to rally around them, not just today, but in the intervening days in which help will be needed beyond this moment. Because everybody has strength enough to get through the funeral. It's tomorrow when help is gonna be needed. So I pray that the calls would come tomorrow and next week and next month rather than just today. There is a word I want to lift up. I don't wanna be long. I've been battling some illness and uh, I'm doing the best I can. But there is a word that comes to us from the second letter to the church at Corinth chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Hear now the reading of the great words from the tent maker from Tarsus, Paul the Apostle. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what can be seen is eternal. I want to talk just for a little while as we reflect on the life of Portia Burgess Etheridge and put a tag on this text and talk from the topic, the great balancing act, the great balancing act. The hymn writer Gene Wilson made an astute observation on life when she penned those memorable words that all of us know. Time is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Time is filled with swift transition. It is a certainty of life that things come and things go. Life is terribly transitory. Things come and things go. Relationships come and relationships go. Time comes to us as a gift from the eternal and then evolves into history. Youth comes as a gift up from life but then all of us as we live understands that old age is indeed creeping on. Time comes and goes, youth comes and goes, possessions come and possessions go. In a concept of called planned obsolescence, 
we see things that we own come and then they go. And while you may not be familiar with the term, you are familiar with the experience. For just as soon as you get the car paid off, it breaks down. Things come and things go. And so it is also with our loved ones. They come and they go, and so it is with Portia Burgess Etheridge. She has come, and as Shakespeare has said, has played out her role on the stage of humanity. She's come, and she now has gone. And in her departure, so too has come her activism, and now it is gone. Her dedication and commitment to students and the capacity of every student to learn has now come and gone. Her loving envelopes from the winnings at the casino <laughs> have come and now they're gone. Her generosity, almost to a fault, has come and now it is gone. And speaking with her family, I'm told that she was so generous that some of y'all probably owe her money now. <laughs> she has come and she has gone. The inspirational messages that she crafted and sent during COVID-19 have come and they have gone. And even her forthrightness which could border on being gruff, but there was an element of tenderness and love latent beneath a harsh exterior, has come and it has gone. And one would think with this uh, transitory evolutionary nature and quality of life that life would be lived with absolute, with an absolute unbalanced complexity. How can one ever gain any footing in life? How can one ever aspire for ambitions and achieve goals and accomplish dreams if life is always so unbalanced? If all life is is coming and going, what is there really to life? That's what the writer is getting at here in this second letter to the church at Corinth. Paul reminds them that our outward nature is perishing every day. You know, one of the things that, beloved, I love about the Bible is its realism. The Bible is so real that love and hip hop ain't got nothing <laughs> on the text. There's a certain reality, a realism, realism to the reality that my 90 day fiance can never compare to Samson and Delilah. There's a certain realism that, that may seem stark and may seem unsettling, but it is needed for us in order to ground ourselves in life. We did not come here to stay. Our outward person is perishing, is dwindling, is diminishing on a daily basis. Paul says it this way, it's wasting away. And you know when something is wasted, it is usually not recoverable. Life is coming and in its constant ebbs, it's also departing. How do I know if you're like I am when you woke up this morning after a certain age, you wake up with a pain and you didn't do anything to deserve it. That's how I know, though, external is wasting away. Yet, in its diminution, there is a certain development. For while the exterior is diminishing, the text tells us that the 
in a person is being renewed on a daily basis. So while this body is perishing, the spirit is being opened to unknown possibilities. While my eyesight is dimming with age, my vision is becoming more and more acute. While there may be sagging body parts that come with age and the muscularity that was once there and the beauty that once defined existence may long, no longer be a part of who we are, there's a certain wisdom that is growing internally that is taught by none other than a matriculation at the University of Experience. While the outer is perishing, the inner person, if we are connected to the eternal, is gaining every day. And there is why the writer can say, and I can offer to you today, that we do not lose heart. For while Portia's exterior has come to its natural end, and all of us at one day or another will die. That's just the harsh reality of human existence. We do not lose heart because there is a countervailing experience that balances all of life. There's something on the other end of the scale that equalizes all of the losses, all of the minuses, all of the setbacks, all of the horrors, all of the pain, all of the trauma. There's something on the other side of the scale that makes this life worth living. And it is Paul here that tells us we do not lose heart. We don't lose heart though the outer is perishing because the immeasurable is being prepared. You see, beloved, if only our gaze on life is horizontal, then we lose perspective on what's really important. The writer tells us that, that there is being prepared for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. That's the good news here. For whatever you think that you've lost here, it is pale in comparison to what God is preparing over there. No matter what we lose, Health, eyesight, vitality, money, relationships, it all is pale in comparison and therefore we don't lose hope because as our elders taught us, we realize that every day we're doing nothing but sending up timber for the prepared glory. So all that Portia did for her students, the inspirational messages, her generosity, and the debts that you still owe. It's nothing but a down payment on the weight of glory. This Greek word here has the connotation, rather I should say the denotation of being pressed down overweighted to the point that it cannot sustain itself. That might seem implausible but and impractical, impractical, but let me see if I can't put some legs on this so that it can walk through the corridors of your consciousness. 
I grew up in a little small town in Kentucky, a little rural community, and it wasn't anything for us to see during the season of harvest for uh, farmers to drive their tractors down Main Street and the farmers would come in to sell their tobacco and they would be loaded on the backs of their trucks. And one day there was, I saw with my own eyes, a farmer with a pickup truck who had so much cargo on the back of the truck, literally, that the tires were almost deflated with the weight pressing down on the, from the bed. That's what the writer is trying to get us to understand, that the weight of glory will press upon us to the point it almost deflates our capacity. But rather than invalidate us, it validates us. Rather than incapacitates us, it gives us a capacity to look beyond the mere present to see what is being prepared for us that has no measure. And in our finite minds, that's hard to calculate because we are good at measurements. We are good at exacting revenge when people get next to us. We are good at taking out our feelings when people get on our last nerve. We're good at accounting. As one old lady used to tell me, when it comes to forgiveness, we know how to bury the hatchet, but we often leave the handle sticking out so that it can be useful when needed. We are good at accounting, but when the text tells us that it is beyond measure, there is no number, there is no weighted system, there are no grams or pounds or units of measurements that can calculate the immeasurable reality heaven. So we just simply have a balance to life, knowing that whatever we lose here shall be gained to a superlative degree over there. And then we do not lose heart, beloved, because the unseen outweighs the seen. Here, Paul tells the church at Corinth, because we look not at what can be seen, for what can be seen is temporal, it's temporary, but what can't be seen is eternal. Anything that I can see is not going to last. These flowers, while they are pretty and adorned, they're not going to last. This church, though it has been in its present state since the early 90s, is not going to last and takes a whole lot to maintain it. You who have to go to the doctor with some regularity to take more pills in the morning than you got minutes in the hour. It's not going to last, but we do not put our freight and weight upon that which can be seen, but that which is unseen. Those are the things that balance life. Those are the things that are eternal. Those abstracts which are concrete, kind. Can't see kindness. You experience kindness. Love. You can't see love. Love has to be demonstrated. Heaven. You can't see heaven. For when we look up, those are just clouds, but there's something beyond the clouds. It is there where we posit uh, the weight of our lives in those abstracts that are really concretes. That's where life has its balance. That's where Portia lived as she served children and family and community. 
that's where all of us ought to live. For life is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. But Wilson was also correct. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. And when your journey is completed, and if to God you have been true, fair and bright your home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Build your hopes on things eternal. Portia has already done her construction. How will you spend the time that you have? How will you expend and utilize the resources at your disposal? My admonition to you today is build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to the steadying, unchanging, immutable, steady and constant grip and clutch of the divine, which makes life bearable, and not only bearable, but victorious. God bless you today. Let us pray. Gracious, all-wise God, we thank you for stabilizing us in some of the most ruckus and volatile situations in life. Thank you, dear God, for being there when others have abandoned us, for, comfort, for comforting us when life seemed insufferable, and for steadying us and stealing us when things were defined by turbulence. Now, dear God, we ask that you would just steady the ship of this family and allow them to know that you are still present and that your voice can still say peace be still Lord we pray that as they say farewell you draw nearer to them nearer than hands and feet and life itself now God hear our prayer blessed name of Christ Jesus our Lord who makes life worth living just because he lives it's in his name that we pray amen we'll ask that the morticians would come and give us leadership as we transition to the next phase of this service for Portia Burgess Etheridge, which will conclude at the Pleasant Valley Cemetery.
Change.